want you to open with me in your Bible into the book of First Corinthians, chapter 11. Today, in Israel, that is celebrating the Feast of Yom Kippur, which is also the Day of Atonement, a very important day in the Jewish calendar. It is actually the holiest day of the year, according to the Jews, and also according to the, the timeline and the belief as it would be, according to the new year that we have, which already began on the Feast of Trumpets, also believed to be the day that the Lord possibly would come for the Lord, uh, rather for the church, as the one declares that the Lord will descend with the, uh, the archangel and with the sound of the trumpet, and from that moment also the rapture will begin to take place. But again, the Feast of Trumpets marks the beginning of the year in the Jewish calendar, and also it marks the beginning of 10 days of war, which end up in the Day of Atonement, which also has been celebrated in this same day that we are in Hallelujah. The Day of Atonement is the day when the high priest will take the blood uh, of the uh, uh, slaughtered bull and will come with it into the Holy of Holies and begin to desire mercy from the living God that they will be forgiven of their sins and they will be able also to find favor in the next one year. And this was being done continuously until the Lord Jesus arrived and of course the feast uh, of atonement was completed in the Lord Jesus because in the same manner the high priest would take the blood of the bull and enter into the Holy of Holies and put it there on the altar. It's the same manner the Lord Jesus took his blood and entered also, enter also into the Holy of Holies before the presence of the living God and at the altar that is there sprinkled his blood as of course is spoken about in the book of Hebrews. So as it is right now we are celebrating the work of the Lord Jesus in our behalf. Glory to God. We are celebrating his, uh, his victory and also we are celebrating the things that he did for us in saying that now no more will there be any need for bulls and goats to be slaughtered, but my blood is sufficient for you. And he said the blood is enough for me. So even now as we do mark this time uh, in Israel, they will be marking it in a different way. But as for us in the church of the Lord Jesus, we recognize that it's a time for us to seek the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Because on every feast, the Lord does actually move upon the earth in new ways. And as you know it, God's calendar does not go according to man's calendar. And the calendar of God also, he delivered it to the Jewish nation. The rest of the world, we use the Gregorian calendar. There is the uh, other calendars, Islamic calendar, there is the solar calendar, there are many calendars that are there in the world. But God's calendar, He delivered it to the Jewish nation, and they know many things concerning how God works upon the earth. If you are somebody to mark the feast of the Lord as He delivered them to the a Jewish nation, not observing them after their manner, but knowing that this is a special divine timing that God moves upon the earth, you also open yourself up for the power of God to move in your life. Hallelujah. And the Lord, I say to those of you in this house, has opened my eyes here and there and shown me concerning how that there is indeed at the time of the feast many things that are happening in heaven. And at one of the years that I have preceded this year, uh, the Lord began to open my ears and my eyes in the realm of the Spirit and I began to hear this loud bang of the door. And God began to say that it is sealed. And this thing was happening on the same day that we are at right now which is the day of atonement. According to the Jewish nation, their belief is not off. It is not off. Many things they are off on, but this one they are not off on it because there is a sealing that takes place on this same day. Hallelujah. I declare to you, you will be sealed for a great year. I declare to you, you have been sealed for a great year. In the name of Jesus, I declare to you, when the doors of heaven, they are shut, they cannot be shut on you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you've been praying and seeking the face of the Lord, you are sealed for a great new year to come. Amen. 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 So we celebrate also the peace of the Lord. And of course, this is an ordinance by the Lord Jesus because after he removed the first covenant, he brought the second covenant. And what we are about to receive as of the Lord's table are the tokens of the second covenant instituted by the Lord Jesus. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 24. The Bible does declare, and when he had given thanks, rather than he begin from verse number 23, for I received 
but that I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had sung, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as of as he drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, drink this cup, ye do shield the Lord's death till he come. Hallelujah. The ordinance is given to us until the Lord Jesus arrives back on the earth. And one thing I just want to take note of is that any time you partake of the Lord's table, the Lord Jesus comes himself. Hallelujah. Many occasions I have partaken of the table. I have seen the Lord Jesus coming, even at times coming to sit where I am as I receive of the Lord's table. Hallelujah. So I want you to take note that at this time, in this same time you are sitting here right now, the presence of the Lord Jesus is with us. He's in this place. Say he is here. And because he's here, as we celebrate him and the things that he did for us, I want you to expect as you receive of the Lord's table that something is happening in your life at this same moment. Amen. Expect a transformation. Those of you who have been weak, expect God to strengthen you because any time you partake of the Lord's table, there is something God is imparting in your life. Hallelujah. Receiving the things of the kingdom of God are not like receiving the things that are in the physical. What you will receive is physical. Is There are things that you can eat in your house at any time. But there will be nothing happening in your life. But what you are receiving, and the important thing, is the spiritual power that is behind what you are receiving right now. Hallelujah. That is the same power that is in the body of the Lord Jesus. He said, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. So when somebody wants to have life in them, you need the flesh of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Then you never eat the flesh and drink the blood. So when you eat of him and drink of him, you are receiving life in you. Why? Because true life is only found in the Lord Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the, the life. So if you have life, if you want life, you need to receive Jesus in your life. And when you receive of the Lord's table, you are confirming this and you are also receiving power into your spiritual world. Amen. Amen. One time as I went to the presence of the Lord, and the Lord Jesus gave me manna to eat. And when I ate it, he said to me that this is supposed to release to me wisdom and understanding into matters to do with the end times. Hallelujah. And I said to those of you in this house, in heaven eating is not for filling your stomach, it is for impartation. Praise God. There is something that is coming in your life. So I don't want you to see the physical. I want you to see that there is something God is imparting to you right now as you receive the Lord's table. The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. What I need in my life. What I, need in my life. I may not know it. I may not. But as I receive the table, but I, receive the table. I ask you, Release it to me. It to in, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to ask the uh, uh, helpers uh, of the house, the ministers, to please help with the Lord's table and to also distribute this to the people. Come, Pastor Daniel, and the uh, uh, Roy, and Mr. Morris, and uh, just those of you who are sitting there, please come. And I want you to help with distributing this. I would like to ask you to take off the bread and also you will take off the cup as well. And have us to pray for it. Just as you are where you are, just hold on, let's pray for this. Father, in the name of Jesus, as you sound, I surrender this to you, Lord. It is of the fruit of the earth, but Lord, even as of this moment, as we begin to receive of this, let the same power inherent in the body of Christ feel upon this mighty Father. Lord God, as your people receive of this, O oh God, may you, O oh God, move powerfully and mightily in each and every life, Jehovah God. I declare that you surrender to your mighty Father. Lord, set the power upon it, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me say Amen. Yeah. And also, Father God, I speak it. I agree with me as well. Papa, in the name of Jesus, I raise to you also the cup of heart. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we partake of it, O oh God. Lord, it is of the fruit of the earth, but from this moment as your servant I declare, Lord, even now, it is indeed of the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and may the power inherent in the blood of Jesus feel upon this, O God, in 
Yes, Father, let each life take transformation as we receive of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me say amen. 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 So, go ahead and distribute. Do receive of the bread and of the cup and wait for my instruction before we actually partake of it. So, take one and hold it with you. Even as you go Please try and move fast as we continue. Uh, people, this maybe you could be playing something of the blood of Jesus. Sing with me now.
sujo na casa de semana, não é muito pecado. O ente é santo, sem o pescado. O livro de testamento é bem mais largo. Descuide. Escolhe a ser trente. Quem tem o ente é o seu filho. Para o recebo de Jesus Cristo. Porque não precisa pecar. Jesus is touching you right now. I command you in the name of Jesus. Let that pain disappear from your life. 
be healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody else will be having chest complications. As I'm speaking right now, God is healing you. He's removing that from you in the name of Jesus. You will not carry that again in the Ramakanda Nanamanda. Receive that power. Receive that heart from the Lord Jesus. Father, we bless your name right now. Father, we bless your name right now. I see the calm God over your heads. I'm telling you. His power is right over your heads right now. Right now. Right now. Father, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow to each and every life. Let it flow to each and every life. The Lord Jesus is taking more in this service. In Kanda Nanavanda. Ravana Nanavanda. He said to me that he's going to take over the service. In Kanda Nanavanda. I want you to begin to expect it. Because God is going to break up in this house. In a short while. Whatsoever needs healing in your life, let it be healed. Let it be healed. Let it be healed. Let it be healed. Some of you are here, you entered in for the first time, but God is saying that you are entering with your testimony. As you are coming out of this house, you are not living even without a testimony, but you are coming forth with a testimony. On this first day you entered here, God is already turning around so many things upon your life. In the Rabakananamanda, Vibaniti, in the Rabakananamanda, God is saying to me that He's releasing peace right now. Peace right now. Peace to troubled hearts and minds. I speak it where you are right now. Let the peace of God be with your life. Let the peace of God come to your heart. Let the peace of God come to your mind right now. Let the power of God come to your life. Oh Jesus, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for honoring us in this way, O God. While we were still sinners, O God, while we have been born again, while we have been saved, O God, you sent your son, Jesus, Lord, as a propitiation for our sins, O God. Lord God, indeed, you have redeemed us, mighty Father, from every tribe and nation, O God, and made us to become a people unto yourself, mighty Father. We thank you, Lord, for the unspeakable gift of your Son, Jesus, O God, and the work by which you have moved in each and every one of our lives, mighty Father. But Lord, even as of this day, none of us have remained the same, O God, since the blood of Jesus washed away our sins, since the power of God began to touch our lives, mighty Father. We honor you and we celebrate you, O God, for your great goodness, your love and kindness, O God. Father God, that which you demonstrated unto us, O God, in your love, we bless your name, O God, and we give you praise, mighty Father. Lord, let your power be continued to each and every one of our lives, mighty Father, as Lord, we make a declaration, O God, not only ourselves, mighty Father, but even our generation after us, O God, we shall serve the living God, we shall serve you, Lord Jesus, we belong to you, O God, with our families, with our generations, mighty Father, to the glory and to the honor of your name. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. And Lord, be with us even as we continue on this morning. In Jesus, let me pray. Somebody say a big amen. amen. And we appreciate the Lord Jesus with a mighty hand. Turn to your neighbor, tell the neighbor. As you hear, you can never remain the same. Amen. amen. I want to speak to us very briefly as we pass the cups also towards the uh, end of the aisle and also the ushers that will be to pick this them from you. Uh, I want to speak to you briefly concerning the one that God gave me for you and will come to the anointing service and even as we move on. Glory to God. How many of you are here in the 21 days? God began to open your eyes in your dream life and to show you great things that are coming for you. How many of you saw your future, saw something for the church, for the people of God in your dream life? Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands down. How many of you have not been dreaming, but in 21 days, you began to dream and to remember your dreams? Hallelujah. Can I say again? Amen. 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 Can we appreciate the Lord Jesus? Amen. I make a declaration to you that even as God began to open your eyes, you will not be shut. Your eyes will not be shut. You will be able to see everything the devil is planning against you. And you will be able to see what God is intending in your life. Hallelujah. Great things are laid in store for us. 
This is a season of double. Hallelujah. Can you say double? And God began to show me concerning double that is coming to us as his people, especially those of you who have been praying at this time. Expect double. There is how you receive single, then there is receiving double. Somebody can tell you, I'm coming to bless you, and I will give you this one thing. And when they arrive to give you that one thing, they don't give you just one, they give you double. Hallelujah. I want you to know that as God is accelerating your destinies, many of you are coming to double. When they hired you, they gave you a certain level of salary. But since God is accelerating you, you will be paid double. Yeah. This is what I'm speaking about. When you are being blessed with that new car, you are expecting one, then you will drive it, then another one will come. But you will receive double in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. And God took me in the vision and I began to see concerning the things that is working on. As I was in that vision, this man of God was prophesying because he was a man of God, a prominent one. And he was standing and he was prophesying. And there were people that I could perceive, though I knew they were behind me, and I could see the man of God. And as I'm looking at him, he's prophesying to the people who are behind me. And he spoke to them and he said that it is the time that you're going to receive double. And as the man of God was prophesying, I saw that his wife, actually the place was a hospital chamber. Hallelujah. Because some of you, you have been in the hospital chamber of God. And God has been molding and shaping and working upon you. You are about to come out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the wife of this man of God was in this hospital and she was delivering. I saw her, she was delivering and she delivered and received a child. And the child was wrapped and placed in her arms. And the man of God was still prophesying. And as the man of God finished to prophesy, I saw him receiving back. And you know the hospital doors, because they normally open by pushing, he returned the doors together. And when he returned back, when he came back the second time, somebody said the second time. Mm -mm -mm. Something else had happened. And, and not to him, but also his wife was carrying the book. And when he entered back again, I saw that in the hands of the wife there was one child and another child again, an expected child. And God began to say to me after that vision again, double. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if you're getting me right now, but I need your faith to go up. Hallelujah. I'm a wild merchant. When I speak to you, only your faith I need. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor faith. That's what you need right now. So you have to pick it by faith. You don't pick it by listening, you pick it by faith. I'm asking it to you. So even the same way, the man of God, when he entered, he did not expect that this would happen in his own life. But his wife, one child came for, and the matter was quiet. But when he left and came back again, the matter was double. Double. He found two children. And the man was very much elated. I want you to know that God has lined up surprises for you. You are expecting one time. You will be thinking it's only one time, but another time is coming again. Double coming to you. You may be expected 70,000, but there was more coming. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor this more. Because it's a season of divine acceleration. Many of you, you've been delayed for a long time. You've been kept back for a long time. You've been waiting for a long time. But as God is coming, He'll either give you double. Or he will give you double the quality. Hallelujah. I, am, I, am, I, am I making sense to you? Because some of you are sitting here also, you've been waiting. You say, Lord Jesus, where is this man? Where is this woman? Hallelujah. And God cannot give you two men. So, Father has blessed me with two men. This is my double. Ah, we will do deliverance on him. God has blessed me with two women. Hallelujah. When they ask you, who are these two people? You say, this is my double. Deliverance is what will follow you. But God will give you double the quality. Hallelujah. Double for your trouble. Because you've been too much. Hallelujah. If you are supposed to receive a millionaire, now you take a billionaire. That sounds like double to me. Hallelujah. 
I want you to begin to expect double in your life right now, from this day as I'm speaking right now. I don't need anything else from you. I need your faith. Hallelujah. Say my faith. That's all I need right now. I don't know what it is that you've been waiting for, what it is that you've been praying for, but as God is answering you, I want you to widen your expectation. Hallelujah. Begin to expect surprises. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. One of the times when I was, I, was, I was resting and the Lord opened my eyes and I saw that I was in, in my parking lot and there was my car on this side and I was standing in between the parking lot. I only drive one car but I saw they were double. Hallelujah. And I was in the garage, shall I go to this one? And I saw the next one. Hallelujah. God to celebrate with me. Hallelujah. If you don't celebrate with me. <laughs> Ha, ah, when people begin to cut people's blessings like, huh? God is coming to bless you. Yes. He's coming to bless me. Hallelujah. After all, I've been praying, hallelujah. And fasting, hallelujah. And I say to you, now you are fasting, but you are feasting. But the time is coming, you will be feasting and you'll be fasting. Your feasting season is beginning now. Hallelujah. And I have to choose between this and that. I want you to know that the season is coming, you'll begin to choose. You'll begin to choose. You'll begin to choose. It will not be only this one. You will say this one or this one. Double for your trouble. Even we fly, we choose now. Hallelujah. It's not only Ethiopian Airlines. Everybody knows Ethiopian Airlines. But now people are about to go to KLM. Hallelujah. I'm not speaking to somebody in this house. Some people, they have never flown, you will fly. Because what God was saying to me is that now He will begin to pick men and women and send them amongst the nations of the world. You're not hearing me now. I don't know who you're expecting is going amongst the nations, but God is opening doors to nations. The season you are entering into is a season of open doors. Tell your neighbor speaking to you. And we have entered the season of 5777. That is the new Jewish year that has just begun. And in the 5777, I want you to know that there is seven there. Hallelujah. But God took me to Isaiah chapter 11, glory to God, and began to show me that He's sending His seven spirits into our lives. Expect seven in your life. I'm asking it to you. Expect seven. And I want you to read for you this verse. And it says, And there shall come forth a road out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and mind, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him quick of understanding in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. Seven spirits. Number one, the spirit of the Lord. Number two, the spirit of wisdom. Number three, spirit of understanding. Number four, spirit of cancer. Number five, spirit of might. Number six, spirit of knowledge. And number seven, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. These seven, they're coming upon your life. Meaning God is going to begin to open your eyes and you'll begin to see things as they should be seen in your life. Nothing will be needed from you. Hallelujah. Because the eyes of the Lord, they're seven. And it's a seven. And God is watching all over the earth. So when God is putting seven on your life, that means nothing will happen in your life by, uh, 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 it's going to shock you in your life. Everything that happens, you begin to see it. Glory to God. Anyone who wants to finish it off, you see whatever they are planning. And in the same dream, you tell them, no, you are not planning this against me. And it's written in the world. You think a bit before it yourself. I'm not speaking to somebody. That's why some of your enemies are about to be buried. You're not understanding me now. I said some of your enemies are about to be buried. The living God whom you serve is a God who knows that there are some powers and some people that until they live up, your life cannot go forward. So God gives them time and space. Let me say time and space. The God says, I gave, I gave to Jezebel time and space to repent, but she refused. Now the only thing remaining is being cast into a sickbed. Now there are two kinds of sickbed. There is a sickbed for rising up and there's a sickbed for dying. Hallelujah. And many times when God wants to wipe out many people, He will put them in the sickbed. And it's a sickbed. 
That's why I'm declaring to you right now in this service that anyone who's been contesting with you, time and space has expired in their lives. Now let the sick bed located in the name of Jesus. You will see them going down as you're going up because your time is now. And he said, My time is now. I feel like making a declaration in this house. Any witch doctor in your village, any diviner in your village, sorcerer in your village that has refused to let you go, and until now they pursue your life. I make a declaration on this on the first day. Their time is over. I command the device on the fire located now. Now, now, in the name of Jesus. Shall that be the end? There are some powers you will not have to contend with them after this 21 days. Because they will be silenced forever in your life. You've been fighting seriously, hallelujah. You've been praying spiritual warfare uh, points even in this 21 days. I want you to know that God has been listening to you. And some of them, they have been delivering blows to your enemies. That's why some of you, you began to see for the first time, you are overcoming in the dream. They come to offer to you food, you say, no please, I'm not eating the food. But before the 21 days, you say, somebody, can you give me food? And you're in the witchcraft circle. Can I help you finish this food? Now you are delivered. Hallelujah! No eating in the dream life. Amen? Because you eat in the dream, it's the same thing as you eat in the physical. If you are fasting and you are eating in the dream, the devil is making you break your fast. Am I speaking to you? Two times in the 21 days, they tried to have me eat. I refused. Hallelujah! No eating in the dream. I refuse it and I cut it off from your life in the name of Jesus. The servant of the Lord, they are coming upon you. Why? Because God is giving you his word. Hallelujah. And the Lord said to me that there is new territory. There is a new territory. Because God is opening new doors in your lives. New avenues in your life. Get ready to take over. Take dominion in places you've not been dominating before. I don't know where your eyes have been set. But I want you to know that that place you've been setting your eyes and saying, this place I must take over. That is the place I'm speaking about. Am I speaking to you? Where you are right now, begin to receive in the name of Jesus. Begin to receive in the name of Jesus. I need your faith to be maximum because I will move very fast. If you miss it, you miss it. Hallelujah. Say, my faith, I command you. Go to the maximum. In the name of Jesus. It's a season that God is sending a fresh anointing upon your lives. Get ready for fresh grace, fresh power upon your life. Hallelujah. And the conclusion of this service is the anointing. Hallelujah. Well, give some of the food as well after. So don't worry, those of you been fasting, you will not die. We'll give you something to keep you along the way as you go home. But in the service, there is the anointing, hallelujah. And this fresh anointing is coming upon your life. And God began to show me some of you. It's going to unfold new gifts in your life. Am I speaking to you? The Lord also began to speak to me. Yesterday night, as I was coming to the morning, He began to speak to me. And He began to say to me that the time is very short. And He said time is very short. I feel fire as I'm saying this because the timeline that uh, the Lord Jesus has to come back it is short and he said to me that we must move very fast we must be quick as the church of Jesus Christ am I speaking to you it's not time to be lazy it's not time to, to be slack it's not time to uh, you know uh, come ourselves in our blankets and be resting it is time to seek the Lord it is time to continue praying hallelujah so somebody saying now the fast is over hallelujah I'm going to sleep I'm going to wake up. The fast is not over. Hallelujah. Because fasting continues. Am I speaking to you? Even if I finish this fast and in the night God shows you, you are going back to a fast. You will not say, I rebuke you. You will say, Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's time to move faster. And God said, We have to be quick in the work that has to be done. And I saw some of you. Glory to God. And there are anointings that God is about to unlock in your lives. In this service, hallelujah. In this service, there are new graces that will manifest out of your life. You will suddenly begin to prophesy. Suddenly begin to prophesy. And people will be saying, are you also amongst the prophets? But it's because the Lord is rotating your life. Say, my father, as I'm here, let a fresh anointing come upon my life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because new power is coming upon you. God is empowering you to go forth. And he said that it is time for you to slash the kingdom of darkness. I'm speaking to you. For God is setting a sword upon your head. 
and it's up to you to slash them. When a sword is in your hand, it's either you use it or you keep it in the scabbard. Is it scabbard? I hope so. <laughs> but you remove it and it's late. But some people, their sword is in their scabbard. Tell your neighbor, you must remove the sword. And slay the kingdom of darkness. How do you slay them? By prayer, by declarations, by confessions, by decrees. Amen. When you say any power that has sworn that I must go down, for them, uh, they must die for me to, to come up. Let me be so. That is warfare prayer. Hallelujah. And ARC is serious of warfare prayer. You cannot be part of this house if you don't do warfare prayer. You can't be. You will be. Hallelujah. Because we understand that we are in a war. Hallelujah. And you say we are in a war. Constantly the kingdom of darkness is fighting you. But the kingdom of God also is determined that the things that must happen in your life, they will happen in your life. So your sword must be a blow. The Bible says, cast is the one who keeps the sword from being soiled. Cast is a person. So if you are not employing your sword in serving the Lord Jesus, he has empowered you to put his word in your life. And you are not releasing it because the sword is also the one. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are keeping it together within yourself, then you are doing a great service to the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that person is cast. The word of God does not need anyone to come and speak it out. If you do something that is against the word, it's not that the word of God you are broken. It is your life that you are broken. Am I speaking to you? So the word of God, we must keep it. As the word it says, cast is the one who keeps the soul from being soiled. If you don't serve the Lord, you are opening the door for the cast in your life. Tell the neighbor, serve the Lord. Because the year and the season we are entering into is a year of service. It's a season of service. Am I speaking to you? Now, the Lord began to show me that his calendar of arrangement is false, and it's a false. And there is a year, uh, uh, rather, there are the four faces that are before the Lord, and there is the face of the lion, there's the face of the ox, there's the face of the eagle, and the face of the lion. And it showed me that in these years, uh, or rather, these four, they operate a cycle of four years by which the Lord operates. And the year which we just ended is the year of labor. Hallelujah. Because the ox represents labor. I want you to take note that the four of them. The lion is the strongest amongst the wild beasts, and they represent the wild beasts before the presence of God. I want to take note that the ox is the strongest amongst domesticated animals, and they represent again the domesticated animals before the presence of God. The eagle is the strongest amongst also the birds that fly in the air, and also representing the birds before the presence of the Lord. And of course, man is the strongest of all of God's creation, also representing uh, the creation of God and man before the presence of God. Hallelujah. Now, I want to take note that the year that has just ended is the year of the ox. It ended by the beginning of uh, Tishrei, and uh, and this is also uh, the piece of trumpets. And now, the year that has begun, we are in the year of man. Hallelujah. The face of the man. Why? Because this they always follow the Lord. When it's a certain year, these cycles they move with the Lord. And every year the Lord demonstrates a different character in that year. When you see certain things that begin to happen in the period of that year. And I said to you, the ox represents labor. And that is why for many of you, the year that has just ended until 10 days ago, that year has been a year of labor. And you labored so much before the Lord. Hallelujah. But I want you to know that you have entered into the year of rulership. You have entered the year of kingship. Man who is king over the creation of God. This is the year you've entered, you've entered into. And because you have entered into that same year, also the Lord is portraying and bringing forth that character in your life at this time. So what am I speaking to you? I'm saying to you, you have entered a year where you will manifest royalty. Whether or not you manifest it is up to you. But God speaks the word. Hallelujah. So when God says this year, this is what will happen in that year, if you don't embrace it and walk according to that word, you miss that word. But if you embrace it and walk according to it, when that year is over, you will look back and say, I have seen that year manifested in my life. Am I speaking to you? So in the year that we have just entered into, and it will proceed into 2017, is the year that royalty will be manifested in your life. Get ready to make declarations that will come to pass. Get ready to make commands that will come to pass. 
Hallelujah. Get ready to walk in dominion power. Get ready to have the enemy subjected under you. Get ready to become a sign and a wonder. I speak to you that I've been passing this to this 21 days. You have entered the season of becoming a sign and a wonder. Why are you going to become a sign and a wonder? Because they will be looking at you. They see a man. But the next moment you will be demonstrating power when uh, uh, to the level that they will not be able to understand. What is this that we see in the life of this person? Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus, when he moved in power, they looked at the man and they said, Is this not the son of the carpenter? And the Bible says they wondered at him. Am I speaking to you? So here he's manifesting power, but on the other side they look at the man. That's why I am telling you, they will be seeing you, the man, but they will also be seeing power manifested in your life. Hallelujah. I said to you, you're shifting in the anointing, you're shifting in power. Get ready to work miracles upon the face of the earth. You don't see the face of the Lord so that you come out of seeking his face and you go back to normal life. You seek his face so that God can impart power into your life. And I'm telling you, you are in power right now. Whether or not you understand it, God has put power in your life. Now, power is for using. Say, power is for using. So that when it is given to you, if you don't use, you will not come to blame another one and say, how come the power never work? It's only because you never use it. So what must happen is you, the child of God, you must begin to realize, I have been set in power. You must begin to command. You must begin to declare. You must begin to work miracles. Whatsoever you are ready to do in this year, God is ready to do it also through your life. If you are ready to heal the sick, the sick will be healed. If you are ready to deliver the oppressed, they will be delivered. If you are ready to raise the dead, they will be raised. If you are ready to release financial miracles, they will happen. Your faith only must be up. Glory to God. Begin to expect, begin to move, begin to grow in the power because God is setting you apart as a sign and a wonder. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. I and the children of the Lord has given to me are for signs and wonders from the Lord, of course, who dwells in one sign. Can you say, I am for a sign? I am for a wonder. So if men are not wondering at you, you are letting the Lord down. Mm -hmm. Let me say to this sign. If men are not wondering at you, you are letting the Lord down. Why? Because he said, my children are signs and wonders. Are you a child of the living God? God says you are a sign and a wonder. So they need to wonder at you. The year you have entered, power is entering your life. And this power is setting you apart. So that when they see the man, they will also see the power of God upon your life. You will become a wonder. You will become a wonder. The next mo one moment you will be eating with them. The next moment power is flowing upon them. They wonder what is going on in this life because I thought they were ordinary, but God is loving extraordinary on you from tonight. From tonight, from tonight, expect God to move you at great speed, supersonic speed. I saw some of you, and God is, 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 is ready to remove you. Some of you, you are in the workplace, but God began to show me that there is a time that is coming, He will pluck you from that workplace and you will enter into His service. And you will not lack either, hallelujah. Because the greatest CEO of the universe is the Lord Jesus. And he knows how to pay, hallelujah. God pays and he pays very well. Get ready for divine prosperity in your life. You will not lack anything. You will be blessed to prosper. You have too much in your life. Too much you don't know how to serve with it. Some people behave men of God who are great substance, they are grown into greatness, but they don't understand. These are men who sacrifice their lives to serve the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. So God has blessed you into greatness. They are the true symbolism and manifestation of the word of the Lord. For he said in his word that in this lifetime, can you say in this lifetime? Anyone who leaves their property, who leaves their wives, their, their husbands, their children, their lands, their businesses, for his sake and for the kingdom, in this lifetime, 100 fold. 100 fold. So that the best of this world, when they get that one fold, because that's what they receive, God said that one, I give them 100 times. You need to get ready for 100 fold. A hundredfold. That's why you are about to drive the most expensive cars. The most expensive cars. I'm not shy to say, let me repeat it one more. In case you mis mistook me. I said, you are about to drive the most expensive cars. That is part of one hundredfold. It's not me who say, it's the Lord Jesus. Read your Bible. I believe it's Matthew chapter 13. In this life, the one hundredfold. 
was ministering just before we came into this service, and as I was ministering, God showed me this young lady who received the liver today, and God showed me they are Mercedes Benz. I saw this is a very sweet car. Hallelujah. They are not driving right now. But God, who knows the future, is already revealing this is what they're going to drive. Serious cars. Some of you are not driving, they're ready to drive. Some of you, they are ready to sell your car, but they're getting a new car. A better car. A bigger car. People here don't like to drive. Okay, then, let me give you some pass. Hallelujah. I'm commanding your show pass to manifest in Jesus' name. You will be busy at the back side, completing business transactions. Busy at the back side, praying to the living God. And your car is driving you everywhere. All you're doing is listening to the Lord Jesus. Nobody is saying for the next meeting I'm going to. And God is downloading to you wisdom and understanding. In the name of Jesus. We say it in Jesus' name. You are going for too much that God is pouring on your life. But remember, as God blesses you, God doesn't bless it for you. Hallelujah. So that if God blesses you and you contain that blessing, you miss what God wants to do in your life. Because He said, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. Hallelujah. And He said, You will not just be a blessing to the village around you, you will be a blessing to nations. Can you say nations? God was looking at you when you were speaking to Abraham. He knew that there will be place to fly. Hallelujah. So that when he blesses your life, you move to the nations of the world. And you tell them, listen to me. This God who has done this in my life. He can do it in your life. Be delivered. And as they deliver, they are blessed. Hallelujah. I expect God to shift you in supersonic speed into places where you've not been before. New territories you will take over in the name of Jesus. New levels of dominion, you will take over in the name of Jesus. That year 577, that year of the man, is the year for the Lord God to demonstrate power through your life that men must be shot through you. Hallelujah. Say, my father, I am ready. And God said to me that in this year as we move forward, you will begin to become a force for him. Hallelujah. A force for him. I want you to take note of the people who have been fasting at this time. And I want you to be fasting at this time. Take note that God is moving into another dimension. I don't want you to leave the past and go back to the old dimension. I need you to go to the next dimension. Even if you've been praying with your prayers, go to the next dimension. Hallelujah. Because many of you, God has been hiding you. I don't know whether you realize this, but some of you, they don't know you anywhere. But I'm here to let you know. God said to me, you are about to be known. You are about to come out of the place of hiding and begin to serve the living God. And you don't serve in small position, you serve in power. Can you say power? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the most powerful men and women of this generation as we are entering into the next season. I'm looking at the most powerful men and women. Ah, you're looking at your neighbor and you're thinking I'm talking to your neighbor. I'm talking to you. Say so you're speaking to me. ready for God to make you a force for him. Joash was a man that was hidden. He was hidden because the powers of witchcraft, Athaliah, the daughter of Jezebel, were looking for him so that they can destroy the man. But God began to hide the little boy. And at about the, the age of seven years, the man was unveiled. Hallelujah. That's why I'm speaking to you. You are about to be unveiled. There are places they don't know you, but they are about to know you. They are about to discover you. They are about to know your name. Hallelujah. I don't know where your faith is, but I said they're about to discover you. Mm. And they will discover you as royalty, not as cheap. As royalty. Because the man, when they brought him up, he was still young. But God began to use him in power. Amen. He became king at seven years. Seven years. And the man reigned for three years. Hallelujah. Amen. Power for a very long time. So get ready for positions of honor, positions of dominion, positions of authority that will locate your life. Places where they have not heard your name, they'll hear your name. People who have never called you, they'll begin to call you. Positions which you are reserved for other people, they will call you and give you that position. Why? Because the living God is the one who lifts up one and puts down another. And the Bible says promotion does not come from the east, west, or south. But it says the Lord is the judge. Am I speaking to you? God is about to judge in your favor. In your favor. That's it to me that there are perilous times that are coming to the nations of the world. 
but it is time for us to remain hidden in him, also to stay in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come my people and hide yourself a little bit. Come into your chambers now so that you can be hidden from, from the scout that is yet to come. And I want you to know that even as God begins to judge amongst the nations of the world, you will not be touched. You will be covered, you will be protected. Psalm 91 is going to be your portion. An angel at your right hand, an angel at your left hand. And the Bible says, a thousand will fall at your right hand, and ten uh, at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, and they will not be able to touch you. They will not be able to harm you. Hallelujah. They are waiting for God, who is going to cover and protect your life. Why? Because you are hidden in the secret place of the Lord. Let me say the secret place. Where is the secret place? It is the place of prayer. The secret place is not somewhere you say, I'm going to hide in that place. You hide yourself in God. In God. There you will be covered, there you will be protected. Glory to God. They are ready because God is making you a force. A force to contend with. As you enter in this season, you are about to laugh. Tears will not be part of your life. Divine laughter is coming to you. Some of you, they are about to discover that you don't have teeth at the back of your mouth. Because when you laugh, they laugh the loudest. They will be busy looking in your mouth. But may God give you miracle teeth. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Miracle teeth can also come in the form of a dentist who calls you and says, We have found you need this thing. We are giving you a discount of 70%. Come now, let us fix you. Hallelujah. And some of you, you don't even have those means. May God be deep because you're not going to in your mouth. I command it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Everything I speak when I'm standing here, I'm telling you, God follows it. If your faith is up to it, it will happen in your life. Yeah. Mm, I'm very serious of what I say when I'm standing here. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because I know God will back the word. This season, there is nothing the devil will try against you that will prosper. Yeah. He will try on every side, but none of them will prosper. And when we began this month, the Lord began to say to me, and I said, because of this house, God said to me that they will fight against you, but they will not prevail. Yeah. Not that warfare will not come, it will come. And he said, it will come. But say, I'm ready. Okay. Say, I'm prepared. Okay. So as the warfare comes, just know that they will not prevail. If right now, as you see here, there is warfare in your life, I want you to know that God has concluded that warfare. He has said they will not prevail. So he said as well, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It can never prosper. It can never start on your life. It can never prevail in your life. Hallelujah. In this season, expect greater revelation. Greater revelation. And I thank God for those who have been uh, uh, speaking and saying that even as they've been fasting, they've been able to read, understand the word, to read the word, and delve into the depth of the treasures of God. Hallelujah. Expect God to unveil many things from the word of God. And I want you to open that scripture and begin to expect that there is much, much revelation that is coming to you from the presence of the Lord. Because God is pouring that upon your life. I command it in the name of Jesus. Anything you've not understood in the word of God, from today I declare, your understanding has been unlocked. Your understanding is open. You will understand it in the name of Jesus. People think understanding is something you just receive. But when I enter the presence of the Lord, I say to you, I thought I know about the end times until I received manna from the Lord. And God said, now this will give you understanding. Then now I began to understand many things about the end times that even I think other people, they have not yet begun to receive them. And God began to show me things that are yet to come, things that are in the season to come, things that will happen after the rapture. Hallelujah. So when God re decides to give you understanding, I am telling you, you will receive it and people will be shocked by you. They will be shocked by you. Right now, they are calling me everywhere. Places that I think they, I thought they would never call me because in Nigeria, they understand about deliverance. Hallelujah. But they call me every time from Nigeria. Kenyans have been going to Nigeria for deliverance. But Nigerians are about to come to Kenya for the same deliverance. Revelation power! Yeah. Revelation power! Yeah. But they said to me, uh, in the hour of the night, we were listening on YouTube, and we stumbled on this video, and when we had it with you, me and my husband, we must call you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Looking and seeking for the living God. That's what happens, because when revelation comes on you, when wisdom comes on you, because wisdom is a defense. Let me say it's a defense. 
You can understand something and the moment you understand it, your life is changed forever. Solomon, because of the wisdom in his life, they came from everywhere in the world to listen to him. Am I speaking to you? I want you to begin to expect that the kind of wisdom God is putting on your life, they will seek you from every quarter of the nation. And I'm not just speaking about biblical wisdom. I'm speaking about wisdom in every sphere of society. Every sphere of society. I don't know why you're working, I don't know your, uh, your area or your, your, your area of work, but in that same area, the wisdom that is coming upon you, you will shock everyone. The ones who are receiving it is done. In the name of Jesus. Get ready in this season because God said to me, the anointing of Elijah is coming down. Mm. One of the prayer points we pray in the 21 days is, O God of Elijah, accelerate my destiny. Now I want you to know that the anointing of Elijah is coming upon you. Because there are powers that must be cut down and God has chosen you. Can you say he has chosen me? Expect to flow in this power and in this anointing to another level, to another degree. Hallelujah. Because Elijah was a man who operated by fire. Can you say by fire? And the man called out fire and fire would consume the enemies of God. I want you to know that you'll be in your own house. And there are some powers that they say, this time we must doubt on you. We must play on your life. But when they try to imagine how they play on you, they will not be able to prevail. Because the same time they come into arrest, they will be arrested themselves. They will just need to pray one prayer point. If indeed I am a servant of the living God, let fire come from heaven and consume you. And they will burn to ashes. Even in a dream life, you had somebody testifying and saying in the dream life, now the enemies are scattering. Get ready for power in your dreams. Because some of you are sitting here right now, you have marathoners in your dream. Every time the devil is chasing you up and down, you can't even tell where you are headed. But that marathon is about to end. Hallelujah. You are about to become a commander in your dream. You will stop the enemy that is coming against you. And you command fire to consume them. You command them to perish. And they will perish right before you in the name of Jesus. I command this anointing to come upon you. That you are an overcomer in your dream life. You can't be here in the physical pretending to be commanding demons. And yet when you go to your dream life, they are commanding you. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. I decree from today and from tonight. Even some of you I command it right now. Father may rise upon the lives of the people in the dream life. Let them see divine victory taking place in the behalf. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It must happen in your life. This power of Elijah, it must rest upon you. Because you need to be a revivalist in this generation. That's why your whole family is about to come to the Lord Jesus. They are coming! They are coming! They are coming! You will sweep all of them into the kingdom of God. All of them were stuck in Jehovah Witness. He will sweep them into the kingdom. All of them stuck in Islam. He will sweep them into the kingdom. All of them stuck whatever religion they are in. Even those who are traditionalists. Those of thy, da, 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 whatever. You will sweep them into the kingdom of God. Say they are coming. We terminate and I terminate every traditional power, every ancestral power that must rule in your family. I terminate them in the name of Jesus. As you pray in the past and you said ancestral powers must perish, I make a declaration upon your life. Every ancestral power that has been ruling your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your auntie, your relative, I command them to perish by fire, by force. When the ancestral power is dead, because you will see them in the dream life, and they'll be walking away from you, and they'll say, I have left you forever. I have left your family forever. I have left your mother forever. I have left your father forever. I am not coming back. The next morning, they're putting their family into the kingdom. Because you have them. But we see the Lord Jesus. And they will say, What do I pray? Tell me right now. And you'll be shocked. Hallelujah. Because of what? Because of the power and the anointing of Elijah operating in your life. Because Elijah was a revivalist. When the whole nation was coming back, Elijah said, excuse me, at this time, everyone is coming back to the kingdom. He shut the heavens and they unlocked the heavens. Am I speaking to you? That's what you are about to do in your family. Anyone whose heaven must be shut in your family, 
for them to get born again, they will be shot in Jesus' name. Yeah. And I put the key in your hand in the name of Jesus. When that heaven has opened, it is in your hand. When they turn to the Lord Jesus, you will open the key and they will see the power of God in your eyes in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Some you say by pulling them out of the fire. Hating the defiling of the garment. Hallelujah. So some family members, you must pull them from the fire. Because you know you've been uh, begging them, please, every day, get born again. Please, Jesus is coming back. They cannot listen to you. Now they must say by fire back. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. In this time, God is raising you as a Cyrus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me say a Cyrus. The Lord said he's raising Cyrus. And as a Cyrus, God will make you command the world. You will command well. Amen. Listen to me. You've been fasting for 21 days of accelerated destiny. This accelerated destiny is manifesting in your life. Amen. In this time, in this season. Amen. Part of your acceleration is that you will command well. God has the Bible say in Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45, verse 1, 2, 3, 4. It does speak concerning Cyrus that I will hold him with my hand and I will go before him and open the two gates. Hallelujah. And he said that I will give you, I'll give to him the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. I want you to know that there are some treasures that are coming to you. Yeah. Out of this past, there are treasures that are coming to you. Yeah. They will call you from everywhere and say, we are sending you the money. Yeah. Even the miracle money you receive. Yeah. Some of you will receive the same miracle money you had about. Yeah. And they are going to settle the debts. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm speaking to you. Because you've been praying, and God will command people from everywhere. They must release their wealth to you. As I'm speaking right now, they're getting ready to go into prayer. I am commanding in the name of Jesus. Anyone who's holding your wealth until now, wherever they are, let them release it. 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 Into your hands. In the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. As we were worshiping in the service, I am just seeing the world that is being released. I was getting too excited. I almost want the worship to say, begin to receive the world. But I'm telling you, this is happening in your life. You are about to become a Cyrus. Cyrus controlled the world of the world. Control the world of the nations. It came to him, the man was in power. You are entering the time of being in charge. But look at what Cyrus did. As he did that, he also began to say, Jerusalem must be built. The temple must be built. Hallelujah. So when God is making you command God, he's not making you command God so that you can build bigger mansion. Pick the one. You build swimming pools that people have never seen in this nation. I don't know what that looks like, but it's never been seen. And you do everything that has never been seen. That one you will build, hallelujah, because it's your portion. But the blessing is for the kingdom. Can you say for the kingdom? Don't get me wrong. When I speak about God blessing you, it's not for you. It's for the kingdom. It's for the people of God, hallelujah. It's for building this church. This church. This church. This one. 5,000 seed We command you to be built in the name of Jesus. Some of you, one person, you will finance this building. What is the problem now? What's the problem? You want person, you can finance this for us. May God bless you to build it for us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You say we build this one, we build another one, we build hundreds of them. Why? You are God's Cyrus in this generation. Say to the temple you will be built. Say to Jerusalem you will be built. That means building the people of God. Am I speaking to you? It's your time, it's your season to take over. It's your time to stand in charge in this generation. God said to me that in the same manner, also as he's raising Cyrus, he's raising an army. That is an army. And this army will tear down the works of witchcraft. Because witchcraft is rampant in so many, many places, many nations. In Africa, witchcraft is everywhere. But at this time, God is raising you as a powerhouse. Let me say a powerhouse. So that he's anointing upon your life. You will bring down the works of witchcraft that have been stopping Kenya. Get ready for altars in your family to go flat. Altars in your village to go flat. 
for the first time children in your village, they go to school and finish their school. People will not be dying left, right, and center. You are attending barrio every day. Every time they are calling in, you say, I'm going to the village. Why are you going to the village? People are dying. You should go to the village. I am going to build them a dispensary. I am going to build them a hospital. I am going to build a school right there. No people have died. I terminated scrap deaths in your family. I cancelled and terminated in the name of Jesus. Let people in the village live. And you are the vessel of God to destroy that which come from your village. Destroy it from Kenya. Destroy it from Nairobi. Destroy it from the nations of the world. Wherever God sends you, I want you to know that this anointing is on your life. Amen. Stand boldly in that place and say, powers of witchcraft operating in this place. Catch fire. Catch fire. You move in and the witches and the wizards they pack their bags and move out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now they sit down with you and they tell you, let's have fellowship and eat food. Because they feed you the next day you die. Any witch that has tried to feed you and will try to feed you, May they carry their own death in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even some of them are in your workplace. Any witch wizard in your in your workplace are declared in the name of Jesus. Whatever they try it upon you, it will never touch your life. It's coming back on them in the name of Jesus. I put you in power and in authority in the name of Jesus. In your workplace, you will speak and your boss will listen. Hallelujah. I want you to know that it's your time, it's your season for your destiny to be accelerated. And it's a speed. speed. It's coming upon you right now. Stand on your feet where you are.